afternoon friends. I hope you're having a lovely day or night whenever you're watching this. So as I've been out on my walk slash hike today, I was thinking about what I wanted to share and I really wanted to talk more about lunar cycles or period cycles or feminine cycles. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I feel like it's very important for everyone to understand, but especially women, because I feel like I have finally gotten to a point where I have mastered my period cycle consistently, and this has shifted and changed my entire life for the better. I also wanna talk about how this has influenced me being an athlete and someone who partakes in a lot of fitness, and how understanding my lunar cycle has been incredibly important for me to be not only a stronger and better active person, but also how it keeps me healthier in the process of doing Doing that. So just to give a brief rundown, some of you may know this, the lunar cycle for women happens every 28 to 32 days. This depends on you individually. During that lunar cycle, there are four phases, just like four weeks in every month. Now I've personally been tracking my period for many years now and I find this incredibly helpful for keeping me on my schedule, keeping me on my calendar so I know exactly when these certain phases are happening. So before I learned more information about my lunar cycle, I used to believe that the cycle ended when my bleeding began and it would start after my bleeding would stop. However, after learning more information about this, I have learned that it's easier for me to track this in my mind by seeing my cycle starting as soon as I bleed on my first day. The reason this is helpful is because some of you may know this but there are two major hormones that play a critical role in a woman's lunar cycle. Those are estrogen and progesterone. Now progesterone is at its lowest when you are in the peak of your fertility and I'll go into that in the cycle in a second and your progesterone is at its highest about five days before bleeding and in correlation to this estrogen is the opposite. Wherever progesterone is at the highest estrogen is at the lowest and wherever progesterone is at its lowest estrogen is at its highest. I will definitely try to insert a picture of a graph to help illustrate this point because that helped me a lot in understanding this and being able to visualize what's going on chemically and hormonally within my body. Now I like to think of it in such a way as estrogen makes me feel good, it makes me feel empowered, it makes me feel happy and more feminine, better at communication. Progesterone I like to think of as bringing me down to earth. It definitely makes me more sensitive emotionally as well as mentally. I definitely feel my energy levels a lot lower and I have to remind myself to slow down because even though progesterone can be quite a challenging chemical to experience in the body, it is definitely necessary to help balance out the hormone of estrogen. So back to the four phases of the lunar cycle. Week one actually starts the first day of your bleeding and it goes for anywhere from three to up to seven or eight days. This depends on the individual person. This is the first phase. Also during this week, as soon as you begin to bleed, your estrogen level goes from being at its lowest and begins to gradually climb. During the second week, your progesterone is going down and your estrogen continues to climb and you start to feel better and you start to feel more normalized. Now during the third week, this is actually my favorite week because your estrogen is peaking at its highest point. I often feel happier, I feel more energized, I feel more feminine, more girly. I feel just overall better, I feel genuinely more powerful. Meanwhile, progesterone is at its lowest point. This is also fertility week, so if you're trying to conceive, it's usually about the third day within this week that is your highest fertility window but this entire week is a great week where you are just at your most fertile. During week four is when your estrogen begins to decline and your progesterone begins to go back up. This also happens during fertility week, but it's more noticeably so in this last week. Now, this is the week right before the bleeding will begin again and the new cycle will start. So it's very important to treat that final week very respectfully. That's where I have found the biggest change. See, I used to think my progesterone was at its highest and my estrogen was at its lowest the first day of my bleeding cycle and it would be like that the whole time I was bleeding. However, I learned information that told me I was very wrong. I should actually be slowing down, resting, and treating myself with more care and more sensitivity, hydrating more, getting more rest, being less ambitious on my projects, being less stressful on my body the last week cycle 
right before I begin to bleed. Some things I've done to help me master my period cycle and become partners with my body instead of fighting against my body during this hormonal shift is I up my dosage of magnesium significantly. So I take about 500 milligrams of magnesium on a daily basis. However, five days before I begin my bleeding, when my progesterone is peaking, I up my dosage to 750 milligrams. I just take this in a tablet form. I also started buying a magnesium lotion and I apply this topically to my body before I go to bed at night. This is also a time when I'm being more mindful and more conscious to hydrate, drinking plenty of water. I switch to tea. I definitely lower my amount of caffeine intake during this time too. And I'm not drinking alcohol these days, but if I am drinking alcohol occasionally, or if you drink alcohol in your life, I recommend taking a break from the alcohol during this week as well. Going to bed a little bit earlier or just being on a very consistent sleep schedule will help immensely with this as well. I try to do something to slow my brain down, slow my thoughts down, and allow my body and my mind to rest a little bit more. Another thing I found helpful is to limit sensory input. Just not taking as much input from other people or from media or electronics, spending time in nature, doing things to, again, slow down, rest, rejuvenate and recuperate your body because it's about to begin shedding your interior lining and that is a whole process. Another thing I try to do is avoid greasy fried foods. Avoiding foods with excessive sodium or excessive sugars is also incredibly helpful during this time. I can't tell you how much my life has greatly improved now that me and my lunar cycle are on the same page and on the same schedule. I mastered this about one year ago and it's been consistent ever since. I no longer have severe bloating. Sometimes I get minor bloating, but that's it. I also don't get cramps or pain anymore because of this. I am still able to function and do things, and I'm also so much more in tune and aware with my thoughts and emotions during this time. I'm no longer getting upset, easily triggered, easily frustrated like I used to because I'm aware of the hormonal shifts that have happened in my body, and I choose to be my friend. I choose to be caring, be kind to myself, and to respect my hormonal cycle. This is all also impacted me as somebody who's physical. I do lots of yoga. I've been going to the gym, lifting more weight. I do put my body through a significant amount of stress. And before I was more in tune with my lunar cycle, I used to push harder the week before my bleed because I had it in my head that the bleeding week is the hardest week when really in reality, it's the week before. So now whenever I begin to feel that urge to push harder, to make up for the lost time I'm going to have when I'm bleeding, I catch myself and remind myself, this is a week that we begin to cool down to begin to slow down I still do cardio I still do walking and hiking I actually increase my walking and hiking much more because it is slower pace but it is still moving I do still lift weights however I decrease the amount of weight I'm working with and I also decrease my reps since my hormonal balance is different during this time my body just simply isn't able to handle with that amount of stress like it is when my estrogen levels are more at peak performance this has helped me to shift and change my life scheduling and and I found it's for the better. I really get to soak in and enjoy the relaxation and recuperation of my body during this particular week. I look forward to it. I do things that require more of a slower pace. So I still feel like I'm being productive, but I'm not pushing myself to try to make up for lost time. It's so nice to not be wallowing in pain in my bed, unable to move, squeezing a pillow between my knees because I no longer deal with cramps like I used to. I meant to mention this earlier, but I also do yoga during the rest week before the bleeding however I switched to more of a slow flow or a yin style yoga instead doing slower or yin style yoga has really helped with this as well and it allows me to continue to move my body because moving the body is important you do want to keep blood moving and flowing for obvious reasons <laughs> So yeah, um, I hope you don't mind that I just felt like talking about periods today. <laughs> um, I'm actually currently bleeding right now, so I think that's probably what inspired this. And if you are looking for more ways that you can practice self-care and self-love, I have a self-care starter pack program that I've created and you are more than welcome to click the link in my bio to go and find that program because it really does tackle a lot of these ways that you can rest and rejuvenate and give back to yourself in a loving way. I'm super, super proud of it and super excited to share that with you. So definitely go 
check that out. Also, shameless self promo, you can find my hats at my merch site. I will put it in the comments. Again, link in bio, all that good stuff. I also have a water bottle. This is new, I just got this. I have all kinds of things on my merch site, like t-shirts, sweatshirts, and hats, and bags, and water bottles, and stickers, and all that good stuff. So if you wanna help support, then definitely check that out. That's a great way to support me and what I do. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day, a wonderful week ahead, and remember to stay grounded, my friends.